Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to my garden on a really beautiful spring day. Sun is out, clear blue skies. Hope you're having an equally wonderful gardening day such as I have today. What I want to do is something that is actually, well actually I'm too late to do it to be fair. I want to start trimming my boxwoods and the rule of thumb is you trim your boxwoods twice a year and the first time that would happen about Derby Day which is in the beginning of June so duh I'm definitely too late but I think I'll get around with that quite well because the first reason is if you find on my channel already for quite a while you know that I am at the south coast of the Baltic Sea I am gardening in a zone 7b and the temperatures in general are quite mild here we might have hot days but you can count them on one hand basically no we don't have weeks and weeks where the sun is basking and fries the entire garden so I can just stretch it a little bit and it is definitely mild this year and normally you should not trim your boxwoods on a day like this when like you know the sun is out of clear blue skies but I'm going to work exactly in this area of the garden here which has a little more shade it's partly shade and some of the box spheres they are in partly shade right now they will receive a little bit of sun towards the evening so I know this is bound to work because I've done it like this in the past and I always miss the point in early June because there is a time when I'm so busy planting. So what I want to do first is I quickly want to give you a quick tour of this area here and show you where I want to trim some box spheres. Obviously just explain to you how I do it and then really important to mention I show you how I trim box spheres. You will find probably a million of different videos on YouTube on people explaining to you how to do so and I feel there is no golden rule to it and how to do it. I think you just need to find your way but you find comfortable and where you feel like the result is good and that makes you happy and um, this is exactly what I want to show you today so hope you are excited about today's quick cute little project in my garden. I'm standing in the midsection of the garden with you so to the right there is the island bat and this is pretty much like south facing here so I don't have a single boxwood in that side and then if I swing around to the left there is an area that is a little bit like a tiny woodland area in a way there is lilac there are what are there apple trees and neighbors I'm just checking hazelnut then there's a garden shed there is a cotinus so a lot of really nice shrubs and obviously they provide a lot of shade like the front of the border at this time of the day still gets a lot of sun but then if we continue walking to the back you will see it gets a little darker so there is a little bit of shade here and only towards the late afternoon and evening at this time of the year there will be light in this area there is a drift of asta astron here which is beautiful at the front of a border because I think it really softens the border nicely and then there are my boxwoods and they look quite woolly at the moment definitely a good time to come in and crisp them up and what I do here is I planted some boxwoods kind of like a little drift in a way in different sizes as well because what I want to happen is that they start growing together into a cloud I really want to have a little bit of a cloud effect here and then in front of it I put some epimedium they flowered very delicate pink earlier on in the year I can come in with my secateurs in a moment and just strip back all of the like brown crunchy leaves and also the aquilegia in the back they have a lot of spent flowers I don't want them to set seeds so I'll go in there as well and just strip back so this is something that I will do here in this area just strip back the, uh, some of the aquilegia some of the leaves from the upper medium and then really focus on these box spheres because you can tell they start growing together but there isn't really a defined line at the moment they're really looking woolly and I think it would be so much nicer once this crisp structure will be back in the border before you start cutting your boxwoods I would always recommend just check in what conditions your plants actually are because I know a lot of people in Europe they are suffering from the caterpillar situation or box blight luckily here I have neither of those I kind of put it on the fact that I'm so up north here up uh, northeast and very close to the Baltic Sea we're on top of the dike so there's always a good amount of wind circulation in the garden I am in a zone 7b so maybe that is a situation maybe I'm just lucky but how you can inspect and what condition your box will is the first thing is very very easy we just come in and just really look into the inside how green is it in total because you want to have a lot of greenery going deep into the box so you don't want that there's just like a little bit here and then immediately it kind of looks like brown and dead the leaves are a little bit yellow towards the center that is normal because they just don't receive too much sunlight so if we take a closer look into the box spheres this is pretty much what you want to see so if I open it you see that there are leaves going deep 
in it. And then at one point they start changing color a little bit more to yellow because they just don't receive a lot of sunlight anymore. But all overall, these are very healthy, good looking leaves, exactly what you want to have. So everything is fresh. They are a little bit glossy. There's no sign of like any caterpillar activity and you don't see any sign of like brown spots or any kind of like wilt on the leaf. So I know that these box spheres, they are definitely happy and healthy. If you want to strengthen the leaves on your box spheres, there is a little trick that you can do. And this is something that has been recommended to me from one of my friends on Instagram. She's gardening in the north of Germany. So a very comparable climate zone to what I have here. And she has stunning looking box spheres. So I dropped her a line like, okay, what are you doing? And she said, I'll use this. So what this basically is, it is a leaf fertilizer and it is very easy to use. I haven't used it yet, but just according to the label, I'm like, oh, that is gonna be brilliant. How it works is you have these individually packed tablets. So you just use one of these here and then you just put it in a spray bottle, mix it with one liter of water, let it sit for 10 minutes and then you can spray. And this tiny bucket is sufficient for 100 square meters of boxwood, which is a lot. You should do it three to five times a year, which is, I think, definitely manageable. So it's nothing where you should go out every single week. Sadly enough, I don't know where my spray bottle is. I'm not going to do it today. I will do it uh, probably tomorrow because then I will go to the stores again, buy a spray bottle, and I will do it in the evening because we are expecting glorious weather for the next two weeks. So not a single overcast day. And doing something like this is always best actually when it is a little more overcast or really in the evening. So I can just spray it and then it can just do all the goodness overnight and the next day it'll be fine. So that was just like a little hint of advice maybe for you as well. What I'm going to do now is show you how I strip back my box spheres. When it comes to the pruning, I love to work with very good old fashioned manual shears because this is what I can work best with in general. I know a lot of people, they also use electric trimmers, which works just perfectly fine as well. And what a lot of people also do is they start the entire process off with secateurs, especially when you have very overgrown boxwoods and you just want to like define a general shape or silhouette again. What I do as well is I just put like some burlap or tarp uh, on the ground just around it so I can collect everything easier. So you could just use whatever you have. You could just use burlap sack, tarp, foil will do the job. I would always recommend you try and collect all of the leaves and do not put them onto your compost heap. Even I don't do that. All what I cut off here goes straight into the wheelie bin. And the reason is quite simple. If you are dealing with box, box blight, none of these leaves are supposed to go onto your compost tea because box bag is a fungus and then you spread it throughout your entire garden and that is never a good idea. And even though I don't have any box blight here, I don't wanna jinx anything, so I just take and put them straight into the wheelie bin. Just better be safe than sorry. So all I do now when it comes to the cutting is very, very simple. I just try to find a nice angle where I can start and I'm kind of just like working my way around here. I'm gonna give you a closer look in a second and then I just start stripping everything back just gently bit by bit you can always go in deeper and when it comes to the part where it just circles in I just change the direction of these because then the angle is different and then I always have a good straight view onto what I'm doing here and I can just very comfortably cut all the way around it. Obviously some of those areas where they start growing together I need to redefine it and I just do it just a little bit here and there. I don't strip in too much because I still want that these box spheres grow a little bit more in height. So if you just want to maintain the height obviously you should strip back a little bit more but in general I think doing topiary and just cutting back box spheres especially you know when it is a little more organic and it's not kind of like rectangle and needs to be like picture picture perfect um that is a very relaxing job to do i think this is just a perfect job for today so now i just want to give you one closer look at how i do it all right so now up close again and here at the front you can see this is where i already started trimming these and then towards the back this is where they're still nice woolly and fluffy and since we're now up close i can also tell you quite well on why it is a good idea to do this job on an overcast day or at least in those corners of the garden where these are more in the shade because it is inevitable when you cut these that you cut through leaves and that means that these plants and the leaves start losing moisture 
temperature. And when that happens, basking in the sun, that is not good for them because those leaves then they will wilt faster and the plant loses a lot of water. So it is always a good idea to do this job on an overcast day when you know two, three days of overcast will be in the forecast. So all I do now, just up close again, is I come in with my secateurs and just really find my way and just snip over them. And as you do that, it's always important to go in and collect everything off the plant that you just cut because you do not want that any of these branches stay in here, especially if you have box blight because then they might rot and that is no good. I'm always so happy when this job is done because this is an area of the garden that I walk through a lot and I'm just always glad when this looks really nice and spick and span and especially now having all these textures I think it works so wonderfully together because on the left I have these plume light very airy flower hats of the goat's beard or Aruncas, if I say it right now, they're just about to open. It's gonna be a cloud of white. And then this really wonderful kind of like pillow from the asters. They just still kicking in with more and more growth. And now the really nice crisp spick and span looking boxwoods. Some of them have a really nice shape and they don't really have a lot of holes. Some of them still need to grow a little bit better. So after pruning, you always find areas where like, there's a little hole here and that one here looks a little bit like an Easter egg on one side but you know what it's better to come in and prune a little more thoroughly because then they will just start side branching out and then these holes eventually will be filled very soon so before trimming those three they almost grew together but after pruning you know it's sometimes better to just make them grow evenly and they're still a little separated so i think in two three years from now they all grow together and it's going to look just like this area here and i feel it really makes a difference once they really start to look clean again i also cut back the seed stems from the aqualegia and I also came in and just removed all of the brown crunchy leaves here from the upper medium so they come back with really nice fresh new leaves now so it is a good time of the year to also make room for all the new fresh leaves to appear. You might think that that is it for today's video, but I have a little bit of a bonus for you. So if you have already box spheres in your garden and they look fantastic and you love what they are doing and you want to have more of them, there is a very easy way on how to propagate them. And now obviously it's super easy because you're left with a lot of cutting. So you can propagate boxwood quite easy from cutting. So what I did is I took out some of those that look already very nice. So you have kind of like a strong leading stem and then tiny side branches. And all I do is I come in in and just strip back everything here where they start branching outside walls also these bigger leaves here because the less leaves they have the less water they will lose now then what I do as well is I come in here and just cut back roughly here so I still have like one leaf axe and then also I just snip back all of these top growing points so they do not continue growing all the way around I think here's one more like that do not cut into any of the leaves so just really cut it off at the stem so I'm left with this there are side branches here as well so I should also strip these back maybe because then they will be encouraged to produce more side branches so this is a cute little starting point so all I do now is I prepared a pot just with a normal potting soil fresh from the back and all I do is I take these and push them in firm them in nicely and once I've made my way all the way around the container I will just water them in thoroughly. 
Funny thing is, I've done this already multiple times. Whenever you firm these in at the side of the container, they take root best. I have no idea why it is like that. That is just my observation. So what you do with this once you're ready is you have an eye on it that you keep it kind of watered pretty much throughout the entire year. So do not let it dry out, obviously. And you kind of forget about it. You put this somewhere in a partly shaded situation. So it's not basking in the sun, but also not in dapple shade, obviously. And do not disturb these. I know the temptation is high, but don't check at least for one year. This is kind of my rule of thumb and just based on my experience. So next year from now, maybe like in 11, 10 or 11 months, I would say, you will see if they have really taken root because then they start really coming with new leaves and then you know, yes, they were successful. And you could just like plant little hedges or start new topiary pieces with those. What I will do is I quickly want to show you at the back of a garden on a slope, um, how some of these are looking after two years, starting off a size like this because I did this already in the past. All of these boxwoods here, they came from cuttings two and a half years ago. I still remember that they were from the hedge around the kitchen garden, which we always cut in about September time. So I pushed them into the soil two and a half years ago, and this is how they're looking right now. And I feel it is really incredible. When you think about that, you just put a little stem into soil and you do nothing rather than watering it. And this is what you're left with. So it is a good time now to also give them a little bit of a first prune, I suppose, because especially this year, they really came with a lot and a lot of robust really vital looking growth and I think that they're just wonderful in front of this little fence section that I made from my pear cuttings or plum, plum cutting that is what it is and behind it there are some aster some Jerusalem artichoke so I think it is just a really wonderful cottage garden look here with the perennials with a basket weave fence section and then once all of these grow into a little hedge I think this is going to be very cute here. This is how it is supposed to look so I have firmed them all in well I still pushed one in the middle just to utilize all of the space, obviously. And then I've watered it in, and now I'm just gonna put it somewhere where it is partly shaded and always have an eye on it to make sure that it doesn't dry out completely. And if I remember, in a year from now, maybe a little earlier, I can give you an update on how these look and what happens with those. That's it for today's video. And I already said it before, I just wanna mention it again. I am just a normal humble gardener here. So this is how I do trim boxwoods. And I think this is how everybody can do it quite easily. So I'm not a specialist with topiary, obviously just if you look at my back, how my garden looks in general. So I really just have these like few box fears and then just a boxwood around the kitchen garden. And this is as far as it goes. You will not find any kind of like spectacular topiary pieces in my garden. But what I wanna say is thank you so much for watching today this video also thank you so much if you subscribe to my channel that makes me really really happy and i would honestly love to welcome you in my garden very soon again take care guys bye